barrio de Asunción, gente viene y gente va, ya está llamando al tambor, la galopa va a empezar. 3 de febrero llegó el patrón de San Blas, ameniza la función, la banda de Trinidad. Luciendo el Kiwabera, Sarcilio de tres pendientes, Anilio siete ramales y el rosario de coral. Baila tu danza y se. Dame un poco de agua fresca de tu cántaro de amor. La morena galopera de la estirpe y colatina, luce dos tensas floridas y viste que hoy llegó a... Cabeza erguida lleva el cántaro nativo, agua para el peregrino, la hermosa mitad cuñada. Mr. Ambassador, good afternoon, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, um, I would like to thank you on behalf of Ankara University for participating in our international webinar series. Today... Merhaba, Professor. Merhaba, everybody. <laughs> merhaba, merhaba. Today uh, we're I together with... <laughs> I hope everybody have a... Nice, very nice Ramazan Bayram, and we're looking for a blessed day of sacrifice. I also want to greet a mis amigos y compatriotas que están escuchando y están siguiendo esta transmisión, y a todos los hispanos que también siguen esta transmisión desde todo el mundo. Thank you very much, Professor, for this great opportunity to meet everybody. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. We're together with uh, His Excellency Ambassador Seferino Valdez Peralta, the first ambassador of Paraguay in Turkey. And as he said, uh, he, he, he wanted to greet people all around the world in Spanish too, then I, I may do so. Would you please <laughs> give me uh, half a minute, please? Muy buenas tardes desde Turquía. Buenos días allá en América Latina. Eh, a mí también me gustaría saludar en español para empezar, pero para la difusión del programa en Turquía eh, vamos a continuar en inglés. Muy buenas tardes una vez más desde Turquía. Mr. Ambassador, uh, the first question uh, or the first thing I would like to ask you is about you and your mission in Turkey. Could you please be so kind to introduce yourself to the participants of our webinar and say a few words about your feelings on your mission in Turkey? Thank you very much. When I was in high school, I have a very great passion for the Hititas. And then I follow up with Atusha, and then I went to Chorum. Then after that, of course, as you know, many uh, for the diplomat is very important, the Treaty of Kadesh. Then after I finished the high school, I went to the Diplomatic Academy. From there, I, I was just appointed to continue my studies in Japan, 
in Switzerland and in Chile. Then my first post was in South Africa. I married there in South Africa. I met my wife there. Then continued to Washington DC when my three children were born. Um, from there to Taiwan, to uh, South Korea, and finally here in Turkey to be honored as the first ambassador of Paraguay in Turkey. And your feeling, how do you feel in Turkey, Mr. Ambassador? Uh, this is where I am starting. Can you imagine I was working for almost 40 years to come to see and to have the feeling of uh, this place. And after one year, my family and I, we had a great time as you know, also as Catholics, we already do the pilgrimage many times before. In 2006, we come to uh, Istanbul, of course, also to Maria Mana, which is, is very important for us. Then to be, is like, be part of the history. Exactly, exactly. So you have been in, in many uh, important places in Turkey, including the House of Virgin Mary. That's uh, nice to hear that. Uh, my second question, Mr. Ambassador, is uh, about your country. You're coming from a country which is quite far, and your embassy is relatively, as I just said, new in Turkey. In fact, you're the first ambassador, as I mentioned, too. Uh, would you give us some basic information for our participants, some basic information on your country, area, population, economic figures, primary goods, uh, imports, exports, maybe as you wish, but that, let, let's introduce Paraguay to, to our participants from Turkey. Thank you again. As the more important is, I just go back to the history of our relation. We started in relation in 1953. After that, we didn't have much uh, exchange but in 2006, we come, as I told you uh, before, to our official visit. We signed very important uh, agreements. And then in Paraguay, we received a delegation from the University of Ankara. Can you imagine the University of Ankara starting the point of our relation, attended many seminars on Turkey in Paraguay, and then after that meeting to, with the scholars. And after that, they decided to open the embassy, the Turkish embassy in Paraguay, and the historic point of our relation was the visit of President Erdogan to Paraguay in December 2018. After that, our relation became very fast. We tried to recover all the time that, that we lost them. We decided or the decision of my government was to appoint an ambassador here and to have a fully embassy established in Ankara. Paraguay is in the center of South America, our neighbor, Brazil, Argentina, and Bolivia. Even look like a small country that seven million people, but the country for seven million people is quite large, it's almost half of Turkey. That means it's 400,000 a little more. Then our uh, products are agricultural and livestock, which is, is very important. Why? Because it's important because we, with our production, we are only 7 million people and then we doing food, we producing food for 80 million people. Technically, we can have all the Turkish, you know, covered with products from Paraguay. And this is something that a country of 7 million people is doing quite well. It's a landlocking country, but that doesn't mean that we don't have shipping company coming and going to all over the world. Then uh, our main products are agriculture, beef is our main product, and also soybeans. Uh, we had agricultural products like sesame that's coming here, also chia, maize. And the more interesting is that even as a small country, we have the biggest hydroelectric in the world. Then we are one of the country producing more energy in the world and we are selling with sporting products. Also, we have major producer of soybeans, chia, sesame, and when you eat sesame, when you eat sesame in the street of Turkey, maybe you are eating Paraguayan sesame on, on the street of any uh, places here in Turkey. This is 
a country who has a very uh, interesting history about what happened, especially we had uh, two big war, one we call against the Triple Alliance, Alliance, uh, and also uh, against Bolivia. But after that, we're working together with all our neighbors, and now we are a member of a Mercosur market, which is important economic uh, association that gives us the opportunity to work with all our friends in the neighborhood, but also to all over the world in different countries in Paraguay. This is uh, a country that has been, after all the situation that we had even in the history, then this is the time that we are very strong and um, very united about all what happened to us. I see. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, thank you for giving us all those details, especially about simit that we're eating, sesams that came from, that come from Paraguay. That was uh, quite interesting. And Mercosur. Mercosur is one of the two most important alliances uh, in uh, Latin America. And that's, that's, that's the most promising uh, economic asset, probably. My third question, Mr. Ambassador, if you would allow me, is uh, related uh, the cultural aspects of your country. We know that the only Latin American country where everyone speaks the indigenous language, in this case, it's uh, the Guarani, right, is Paraguay. So we can even say that Spanish is not the only common language, but Guarani is also so too. Why is this and how was this cultural heritage protected? I was uh, able to see this, present uh, this in situ, in the place. When I traveled, as you mentioned, we had a, a very important uh, symposium uh, on uh, the First World War, and we uh, did the symposium in the installations of your parliament, actually. Uh, so that was a, a quite a nice, good uh, experience and a great honor for us. But uh, we were totally surprised to see that everyone spoke the indigenous language, just like the Spanish. So everyone is bilingual there. Uh, could you please Tell us why is this and how this was possible? Because in no other country in Latin America, you can find it in 100% as your country. Professor, this Guarani is very touching for the heart and for the soul of Paraguayans. This is the background of, of all the Guarani language and even the Paraguayan nation is a very romantic one. You can even do a movie for that. When the Spanish people arrived to Paraguay, the Spanish conqueror that we call the conquistadores, they fell in love for the Guarani princes. The princes, the Guarani princes, were the daughters of the Guarani kings. We call king, but is that we call officially we call that the name that we're using is the caciques. Then from this starting relation with this marriage of two cultures, they come the Paraguayan nation. And we continue to that because we have, of course, our grandfather, which is Spanish, and our grandmother, which is the is Guarani ladies. Then the Paraguayan nation come together in this feeling and become only one nation that even we can call ourselves a Guarani nations. And also this is so a uh, part of our history in different timings. Like uh, we continue talking in Guarani and then even books are writing by the Spanish priests are writing the Bibles in Guarani, music is wrote in Guarani. And we continue on that until we have the word is that I was referring before, and the language was banned or was prohibited for, for some time. Then we have another war against uh, Bolivia, and in this uh, time, all the communication was in Guarani. And continue the people talking in Guarani as, as the mother, or, uh, father, and then continue. This is the way that we were learning just talking is not a writing language of, them, of that time. Then we just 
talking and this is the way that we Paraguaya we identify ourselves by talking in Guarani. Even it's, it's very interesting, but sometimes uh, it's very difficult uh, in our uh, job that to know, to confirm when people don't have any documentation. But if we want to confirm that this is a person truly from Paraguay, then we just speak uh, in Guarani. Then mm -hmm. after all this follow up, up and down, then in 1966, the uh, constitution, the national constitution, uh, declare that the Guarani will be our national language and the official language will be continuing in Spanish. And the following constitution, uh, constitution, national constitution in 1992, then officially declare both language has an official language. Even we had some decree, uh, there are now the teaching in the, in the school, in the universities, uh, in Paraguay and even international uh, universities in the United States and also in France, they are teaching Guarani. But Guarani is considered in the world in the ninth language most difficult to learn. Why? Because this is what's passing from generation to generation. We are so happy and so pleased now that we had more people studying and doing, and at the school, most of the students already learning, not the way that I was learning, because I was learning young from, from, only from my father, and now they can scientifically start writing. Something also that is very uh, close to, our, to us, and this is coming for the Guarani times, this is, I want to tell you about, this is, we, we call them terere. Terere is a mate tea that we are drinking normally. Uh, this is the, uh, we call the wampa. This is you put here. This is, is made from cow horn. It's inside and then covered by silver. You had the, you put the mate tea here inside and this is the bombilla that we call the straw. Uh, it's kind of a straw. Then you put the mate tea there. You put the water and you sip. This is something of the most traditional uh, that, that we using in Paraguay style because it's a social drink. Even now that we're not using much for for the pandemic, because before we were sharing all the time, and this is a, a social drink. And I feel like is when I come here and see the Turkish people drinking the tea. For us, it's like being in Paraguay and drinking together and going from one place to another. I have it because this is not just only a drink. It's a social family, friends, all together drinking uh, terere in everywhere. And we eat, we drink also in the in the way uh, with the hot water that we call this is the normal matati, but this is just very characteristic from the Paraguayan people with this drinking terere. Very interesting. So that's your child, right? Yes, I This is one of the child, exactly. The Paraguayan child. Exactly. Uh, one thing I would like to point out uh, before passing uh, to, to the pandemic uh, episode of our uh, chat is that you, the Paraguayans, are the only people in Latin America that can pronounce uh, the sound U in Turkish. It was incredible for me because uh, U, U, these are very, very hard sounds because they don't exist in Spanish. So in other countries, we were quite, uh, it was quite impossible for us to, especially in the cases of names like Irmak, Ilgun, Özge, Özgür, Öznur, etc. But we were sh practically shocked when, I, when we saw that people were constantly saying U, which means water, if I'm not mistaken, in, in, in Guarani, right? Professor, I see you will be in charge of this video conference because you know too much about Paraguay, but this is uh, something that in the pronunciation of good diving with when we talk, we have in uh, Guarani this pronunciation that we call is gutural. It's here the pronunciation, and this is U, which are found also in uh, Turkish, which is something very uh, interesting for us. And we have three students, three uh, Paraguayan students coming here. This is the first time that the Paraguayan students 
was having in official schol uh, scholarship from uh, together the Paraguayan government and the uh, Turkish government. But uh, before we had another student, but they are very easy, it's very easy for them to learn the language because this pronunciation that we use and the base of the Guarani language is the U, which means uh, water, but then is Ubu is land and then Ubaga is the sky. Then this pronunciation is basically following, this tone is following all or all the uh, language pronunciation. Very, very interesting. I'm sure uh, linguists have taken note of this and they will start to see the relationship between U and Su, as we say it. Now, the first question is going to be about the most important event of this uh, year, Mr. Ambassador. Could you please give us some information on the difficulties of COVID-19 pandemic in your country and the measures taken in your country? Professor, just to continue what you just say, you will be more authorish or something that I will tell you, but this is not scientifically proved yet. It's something that I was uh, looking on matters, documents taken of the people, but the Guarani belong to the Ural Alta race. That meaning, <laughs> that meaning uh, Professor, you know what does it mean? We are to totally related. This is uh, for people from the universities and uh, we hope that very soon we will have some uh, exchange of anthropology or some study on uh, people who just go linguistic and scientifically study the situation. Because this is just when I look in at the people and when I see a physical uh, look, then look like very much everything is so related. But belonging to the uh, Ural Alta race, then there is no more comment on that. Then exactly. I, go, I go to the to the pandemia, and this is uh, my president, Mr. Mario Abdo Benitez, went to the, was invited as a guest speaker in the World Health Organization last uh, May. And in, on this occasion, he said that this is a inflection of the history that we are having now that we need to take so much decision regarding cases that affect not only one country, is all the humanity. And this is something he said that we need to work together with solidarity and need that this is a fight that we need to work all the, all, all the people, even governments and the citizens. We have in, unfortunately, in March 7, we had the first case in Paraguay. After two cases, then the government has decided by advice of the Ministry of Health to lock down the country. That was a very hard decision and very difficult decision, but we take it. And that was the more important decision that in very a short time, we flattened the curve, which is the most important that everybody was looking at. It was very hard, but we are so pleased that the people, the Paraguayan people were so united that they worked together. They accept all the advice of the Ministry of Health Many business was uh, falling down, of course, there was uh, all closing, and the country itself was locked down. The borders was totally closed. The international airports all closed. And even, this is one of the mentions that the president, he was taking so hard decision that all foreigners, they cannot enter into Paraguay, and also some Paraguayans living In, in, 
After all this uh, timing, of course, the government has organized people who ask. Okay, we, we, we can continue, Professor. Benadine, Mrs. We can continue. Mr. Ambassador, Ms. Yes. Mr. Ambassador, yes. I think we we're having a problem with your internet uh, connection. Uh, maybe you can uh, repeat the last 15 seconds or 20 seconds of your uh, answer, please. Okay, okay. I think it's uh, technically uh, also my, my techniques, the mission is working also on, on the matter. No, I was saying that after that, these programs that the government is starting, one of them called Yangareko is to taking care, and another is Pupimo is just to help him. This is using the Guarani uh, name. This is giving some amount for the people who are especially small, uh, small business that need some assistance at the moment. It's not a uh, big money, but at least they least they have something to help them on this fully quarantine lockdown. Then this is why we show the solidarity of the people. We organize something like uh, community kitchen that you can call in English. I don't know, we call Oya Popular. Oya Popular means that the people are putting together all the help and they giving uh, food to the people, to the most needy people. Even the first lady, herself she was taking the leadership on that and organ organizing in different parts uh, of the country these ollas populares then to help the people also the military the all the firefighters all the uh, medical people who are working already on the matter but needed to be assisted in some case they receive this assistance also, even the NGOs and the soccer teams, uh, teams, which is very important to us, then they organize in different parts of the country. And thanks to all these organizations, we come in some way to finish that we call the fully quarantine. And we go to a, another level, which is the level that we call the phase two. First, starting the zero, which is the fully quarantine, then the, uh, starting in May, we call the phase one, then in May 25, we go to the two, and now we are starting on the phase three, which is more or less uh, open, more than 70,000 people going by, going by to work, then business and restaurant are open, cafe are open also, and different, you, you can go to the gym now, but the celebrations, church celebrations are going to 20 people. Uh, soccer, as I said before, we, rest, we wait until the next uh, uh, time, which I think is will be in middle of July, but it's not confirmed. Our authority are looking at this uh, situation, but uh, of course the number increased a, a little. The more important was that we have only 95% uh, of our people, which is, we have full, is only 1,296 until yesterday. Uh, people that they had the case, positive case. And from this number, only 95% or only most, most of the 95% they have, uh, mild symptoms. Only 5% need hospitalization, and we have only two people in ICU. This is numbers that are uh, very incredible, and this is uh, that we, we are so happy that our authorities are taking the right uh, decision on the moment that we are uh, in this situation. And almost uh, one month until yesterday, we didn't have any death. 
uh, only yesterday we had the number 12 people that uh, pass away on this uh, unfortunately case. But numbers are so uh, impressed. Why? Because we take a decision very fast after closing the borders. We organize that they call in Spanish is albergue. The translation will be more or less shelters, but not shelters or a kind of hostel that we call quarantine hostel. Hostel, the people coming from outside, our own people, then come and stay for 14 days in these places until everything is going well. Then when they finish that, uh, the, the time of quarantine, then they can go out. And this is why we have these places uh, with a lot of people, but the hospital are not uh, full of people. This is the more important, I think, decision that our government uh, has taken. First, we're starting with uh, military places, then the people stay there. Then we go with the assistance of some uh, social club, then the, the firefight organization, then the church, they give the place. Even soccer teams, they give the place that the people can stay in quarantine. And now, we have that we call health hotel. We have hotels, five star, five star hotel, or many of the industry of the hotel that open to keep these people in quarantine until they have this time. This is the Minister of Tourism has working very uh, close with the industry or hotel industry to organize uh, this matter, and that has a very uh, success uh, cases. Also, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, more that assisted to the people, now is checking every restaurant with the Ministry of Tourism, just because yesterday we started in the first time that we opened in the uh, phase three. Then, uh, very carefully, we are going up, uh, going up to, we hope, inshallah, we can uh, have that in the phase four that can come back entertainment, can, can come back church also, uh, can come back uh, gym, but with many people and soccer. But uh, what we are doing, uh, what we are doing was an effect uh, decided very strongly by our Ministry of Health. And all the, the, the this is the more important that we need to point out, the that the citizens, the Paraguayan people has been united with the government to take all these measures. And until now, we still, we still, we still need to wear masks, of course, taking all the precautions regarding washing hands, and also not uh, avoid that when many people is. This is, we continue in the same arm, we hope, until the, the time that the, our authority decided that. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. My next question was about the medications and treatment uh, in terms of uh, this fight against the pandemic, but you mentioned some of it. Uh, could you please point out if there was any uh, cooperation between our countries maybe in this field? Thank you, uh, Professor. On the case, I, I just uh, want to point out the background. What happened with, in Paraguay is that most of the people with positive case is in the range, 42% of the people is in the age 20 to 30. That means very young people. Young and people. the large, which is almost 72, is between 18 to 40. This is why really few people needed this uh, assistance or need to be hospitalized. Most of the case, they stay in their home. And if they don't decide it, uh, if they had some problem because it's a small house or they are not happy about the government provide them a place when they can stay in uh, quarantine. Uh, regarding what we are doing, this is, uh, I'm very happy that I received some uh, communication from uh, Dr. 
eh, Jorge López Benítez y su kit me because I'm not a diplomat, I'm not expert on medical care, and I just want to read it because this is something that needs to be very clear, is that our Ministry of Health is collaborating with the School of Medicine of the National University of Asunción in the following clinical trials. Solidarity trials is a four-hour international clinical trial headed by the World Health uh, Organization and the Pan American Health Organization, where it will compare the effects of Redensivir, Lopinavir, Ritonavir, interferon beta, and hydro hydroxychloroquine against a standard of care in patients with COVID-19. The use of plasma of patients who have COVID-19 before with patients with severe infections. The use of hydroxychloroquine has prophylaxis of medical personnel. And also, we are participating in COVID-19 host genetic initiative to learn the genetics determinant of COVID-19, severity of the disease and outcome. All these trials are starting, I will be starting soon. The ministry has made some recommendations for what we know has the standard of care of the COVID-19 which included, but is not limited to use, of anticoagulant, respiratory support, treatment of co-infections, oseltamir, oseltamivir for the flu, acitroncithine for atypical germs or so forth, hydroxychloroquine inhibitor and others. All this measure has been taken that allow us not only to take care of the people who are uh, without symptoms or very mild symptoms, but we are taking care of them uh, in the hospital. Regarding of our relations, I, I was uh, so happy, uh, Professor, that you mentioned this, our relations with Turkey. On the occasion of Ramadan, my first lady sent a letter to the first lady of the Republic of Turkey. I, uh, on that letter, she uh, just sent her wishes for a basic, very blessed Ramadan, and also was talking about different matters that she was doing. And she mentioned these ollas populares that we call uh, community kitchen and the work has, her office is doing. And we are so happy and we are so Please, about this personal relation that is starting in 20, uh, 2018 in Paraguay have become very close, like my president and President Erdogan and the first lady with the first lady of Turkey. And she is answered this letter very quickly and in very in, uh, in effective matter. And this week, we already received some assistance from Turkey. We receive a lot, uh, many uh, protective uh, suit for our medical uh, glove. We receive also some protective glove and some protective shoe. All they already arrived in Paraguay and uh, inshallah, uh, this week will be the official ceremony for uh, receiving, officially receiving. But uh, we are many, uh, we are very thanks for uh, this assistance. But, uh, my people, especially my minister of, of foreign affairs, was talking to me in the same way that we are doing on the video uh, conference. That he said because he also was very interested in what is the situation in, in Turkey. Then he was very impressed and he was very touched and he, with a lot of admiration, how Turkey, with all the situation, has the power and has the infrastructure necessary not to take care only of the people, but taking care of many other people also, like the case of my country. And I know this was helped more than 102 countries. This is showing how strength, how, uh, uh, what is the force that Turkey have 
on the on health matter. And also this kind of, uh, of meetings and this kind of relation, this is uh, the personal relation between our uh, first lady helped a lot of also my work uh, in the embassy because that give the opportunity that uh, we had a close contact about uh, everybody. Also, going back to the to the pandemic, even and to the Mercosur, even we need to uh, adjust our life to the situation. And this will be the first time in a few weeks' time will be the meeting of Mercosur. This is the yearly because Paraguay is now the president of Mercosur, and we will go to an, another country. Then the meeting with the, the presidents and the minister, and all the meeting will be by and be to work the same the same style that we are doing then all our life our work uh, with the ministry is going in, in this situation and i found very practical and very easy the way that we can uh, arrive to all of you and to have the contact in in this in this way thank you mr ambassador um, the effects of the pandemic uh, times we, we already talked about the uh, health system and how people were affected, but could you please point out some specific sectors, such as tourism, agriculture, uh, pharmaceutical industry, that uh, were affected directly and how they uh, overcame the situation if they did? I'll tell you before, we are agricultural and livestock country. What does it mean? That even that we are in low down, producers didn't stop. Farmers work. Industry related to this matter working. And all the people who are related to uh, this matter, they had a special authorization from the government to work and to continue the production with this is very important. The trucks with cargo are coming and going without any problem all the time of the lockdown and quarantine. Also, airplane, airport is open to cargo places, to cargo situation. Even humanitarian flights we allow to them. That means that we continue producing, the country is continuing working in this field, which is make us the strong a part of our economy, which is part of very important strong of our economy. Like uh, livestock is still continuing, our export continue has always in different parts of the world. Uh, we, our beef is going to Europe, is going to Russia, is going to Chile, is going to Taiwan, then the export continue normally. Uh, the relations or the business with Turkey continue very well without any convenience, uh, we are sending uh, now rice, we sending also sesame, and we are sending some products made from the uh, sugar cane. And the other side, the Turkish products are arriving normally in Paraguay. Uh, has a Turkish uh, textile arriving in, in Paraguay, even sac fa factories is already in Paraguay. Investment are continuing as normal. We have many companies who are interested to go uh, to do business in Paraguay. We continue in the same, in the same way, the negotiations uh, in the energy uh, sector. And also uh, some companies who are interested to invest in Paraguayan companies who are interested to invest in Turkey. We continue with the negotiation and inshallah we will uh, very soon uh, we get some uh, Paraguayan companies already working in Turkey. But of course, we have the three uh, sectors that are more damaged by this pandemic, the tourist sector. Uh, you know that uh, Paraguay is very important for tourists from the region specifically, and uh, many countries because of the climate. And we have near us is uh, the waterfall, the Wasu waterfall, but many people come to Paraguay, they have a good time there and they go to see the waterfall. Then the Itaipu hydroelectric camp, there's a lot of visitors. We had lakes, we had rivers, and we had forests that the people are interested in uh, to visit. Then the tourist sector has been a lot of, of course, received 
uh, very uh, big damage on the case. And we had the Jesuit ruins because uh, some of you people and listen like that, maybe they saw this, this movie, The Mission with Robert De Niro. This is the show that the place that happened all the history in, this is in, in Paraguay. How we adjust that, this is the, the, the place that the tourist was coming that we call the posadas, the small host, hostel places and the five star hotel even, they become health places, health hotel, we call albergues. This is, this is one of the way that the people uh, start adjusting themselves uh, to the pandemic are uh, having new uh, cases that they can start working. Also, another sector is the gastronomy and the gastronomy, the restaurant, the Five Star Hotel, they start ch uh, changing to delivery or they start adjusting saying to be delivery, sending all the products to delivery. The, another uh, another uh, sector that is the entertainment, a musician, because we are very famous for our music, our art, and this is of course, and we go all virtual. Even we have our celebration, the Paraguayan National Day was in May 14, then we decided to do some official reception with uh, this kind of video conference that by soon also the group of musicians was playing music of Paraguay and doing Australian to celebrate in all over the world. And we do it all, all that way. Uh, of course, the government give assistance to a small uh, and medium enterprise. Uh, we are very happy to announce that in this phase three now is more than 70, thousand uh, people is uh, going back to work with more than 200 uh, uh, companies that are starting work again. So uh, maybe we can say that uh, they did not stop totally. I mean, the sectors, they were, of course, they were affected, but they did not stop totally, most of them. And they're recovering uh, in a healthy way. And that means that our uh, imports and exports also will uh, recover uh, quickly. Is it so, Mr. Ambassador? Yes, uh, this is very important to point out because our production and the more important also that the sector that didn't stop are the public work, the work infrastructure. Then the public sector are working normally. We are building three, uh, three bridge or, or almost starting already. And then we are building another bridge uh, in, uh, still with negotiations with our neighboring country. This is, we're talking about bridge, the site of the Istanbul bridge. And mm. this is also the important matter of uh, uh, important matter that we can work together because we need steel. We don't have need steel. Then we, uh, we, uh, we import our steel from uh, faraway countries. Then now I working very hard that can just come here. And from here, we're taking of the steel to work together in the building of uh, this, these uh, three uh, bridges, because you had the knowledge, you had the know-how, you had the technology. And this is that we need to work together, then we can uh, quickly get done all. You already built the, the I don't know how, when you already built this, uh, the Istanbul bridge, but then we are building something like that. Um, I, I'm sure you know a lot of how to build uh, bridges, then that can help us a lot. Uh, this is not, unfortunately, this is not my first pandemic. By circumstance of the career, uh, I was, when the SARS uh, pandemia or epidemia starting, I was in a country even, I went to quarantine, I was locked down in a crystal uh, cases or something like that uh, in the airport, was uh, a very uh, a strange case. But this is my second pandemic that we can say. And the more important is to tell what you are you saying something very important was the quick recovery. Quick recovery. This is something, Professor, that you point out exactly in the right, in the right point. 
because after the, the, this situation, after, after being in quarantine, there is a economic, is coming, Professor, is coming. I, I know I have experienced a economic boom, very important. We need to be very positive. And even if you are, and, uh, are a little down, it's not the situation. We just need to support. Uh, we just need to accept these new roles or social rules that we are using. But very soon is coming a booming, not only in our countries, but most in our country because we are producing uh, food. We are producing a material essential for the humanity. You produce still everybody needs still and many other. Then countries like Turkey and like, um, Paraguay are so well positioned that after this situation that can be months or less than months, then will be an economic move and very positive time. This is a time of change and we need to take advantage of this uh, a possibility that we start, we will work in uh, very soon. And we need to be, the more important is to be positive. Inshallah, both countries, Turkey and Paraguay, will be so well positioned that after that we will have a very strong economic boom. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, that optimistic uh, point of view is quite necessary in this pandemic times because uh, many people, maybe most people, are asking themselves what's going to happen next. Uh, is there going to be a, a quick recovery? Some are very pessimistic. They say the world is not going to be the same again, which may be possible, but uh, we must adapt to the conditions and uh, continue uh, to work, to cooperate. So my last question is going to be, a concrete one. What are the aspects that you can foresee of cooperation? What points of cooperation can you see? Actually, you mentioned some about the construction, about uh, agriculture, some, uh, some things that were uh, already being exported to Turkey from your country, our import uh, products. Uh, 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 dealing with some food supplies and uh, our contractors uh, may have some opportunities they, there as you have mentioned. Could you please give us some details on our cooperation today and how could it increase in the future despite the difficulties of, of the COVID-19 pandemic? And that was the, the last question. But the most important one. <laughs> Professor, the world has changed. The world will change. But this is normally, this is normal. We cannot stop the, 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 the country, the life, everybody needs to change every day. But that I can see is that this will change for very positive. Now, most of us, we had the time with the family. We had the time to enjoy opportunities that before we were missing. Everybody was so involved in the, the, in the work, uh, in, in the passion or, or uh, traveling. Now is the time that, that we share that maybe we didn't appreciate it. There will be a change, but most positive change because we already realize how much we need to appreciate everything that we are uh, taking just without grant, uh, for granted. Like shaking hands. Before we're shaking hands, so we shake hands. Or we kiss when, when we say hello to, to, to everybody, or we just embrace everybody. This is things that we just we just uh, take for granted everything. Now, the time that we are going back to then, of course, we will shake in hands stronger, we will embrace uh, stronger, we will kiss stronger. Then all these things have changed, but we must be sure that the change will be a very positive change. And going back to the... Uh, to the uh, uh, cooperation. Also, uh, we were talking only about the pandemic cooperation, but I need uh, to point out also that uh, Turkey has been uh, cooperating with my country with uh, many uh, fields already, specifically before we had uh, ambulance uh, arriving to Paraguay, health equipment, uh, also agricultural uh, equipment. 
and that I, I, I saw it, that I realized is that we didn't know in Paraguay, we didn't know all the high technology and all the products and everything that we can use, especially in the uh, industrial and also in the construction, uh, contractors and everything. Machineries for the agriculture. I have been visiting universities uh, also in the medical field. We need to cooperate. Even I, I don't want to always put in Ankara, have, University of Ankara has example, but this is unfortunately or fortunately, this is the situation. We will start medical exchange. We already started, you have been already signed an agreement with five Paraguayan universities. This is something very important because Paraguayan population is 70% of the Paraguayan population is under 30 years old. That means that we have a young population that need to be educated. And this is why we need to work on this, uh, on this matter. TICA has already offered a scholarship for uh, Paraguayans. We will work uh, with them for training our security force we will uh, work with uh, more students. We have many companies that are interested to go to Paraguay. And we have a small, uh, not difficult, but a small challenge, language. So many people, so many Paraguayan people are interested to learn Turkish language that we need to start. We start now already uh, Turkish online. They, but they, they want to come. So many uh, changes that we can do in the drama fields, in the movie fields, because everybody in Paraguay are talking about uh, production, movie production together, Turkish and Paraguayan. They are actors, actresses, uh, managers that they want to learn what uh, Turkey is doing and what we can work together, both sides, vis a vis win win situation. Companies are going uh, to Paraguay, coming also uh, here. And even uh, I'm, I'm leaving uh, after tomorrow to Antalya to meet in some cheap breeder because we want to improve the production that you have here is something amazing. Uh, we are expert. We had uh, the best uh, beef in the world. And then we want to start in another uh, production also. And we have even I forget to tell you that uh, when I start talking that I am belong to the recess for team. And then why they will ask me, people who have listened to this, why recess for, what ambassador? Because we had soccer players. One, Brian Samudio is playing here in, in, in recess for. Then in this field, athletics, this is things that every, uh, there is all the possibilities. And it's, it's not something that we are talking uh, just our possibilities. They're already working. The three students, Paraguayan students, is uh, already here. And, and the more important, Professor, I, I will refer in, again on our agreement with the University of Ankara. And I, I just uh, talking now, now to you, but to the people who are listening, that, that we as diplomats and he as professor, we're working together, we sign the paper, but this is, is coming only in life is coming the realization only when the people are, the citizens, the young people are meeting each other. They are the one who give the life to all the documents that we are signing. And then we are asking them, uh, please try to be more in touch. Um, uh, Professor Kutlos is an <laughs> amazing man. Then I know how the, he gives this high spirit to the students. And this is the kind of uh, experience that we want that can work because sometimes staying in the your zone of comfort, you have been traveling to Paraguay, you have been traveling to so many countries. This is the way that we need to work together. This is the way that I look forward to my country also to come and to learn, not being as tourists also here, but only uh, so not only tourists, but come and to do business with the people and to visit all the historic place. Sorry, I was professor, history professor before. Then this is something <laughs> that I miss in much talking about universities. But then I know we have time, professor. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. We will continue our collaboration. We have many greetings from Paraguay. Uh, that, uh, my, my friends, my colleagues here are pointing out that we're receiving uh, messages from Paraguay. So people are listening and watching us in Paraguay too. Many thanks once more, Mr. Ambassador. It was a great honor for us to have you here participating in our webinar sessions. And I would like to end up my words in this session uh, with greetings and best wishes in Guarani. Rohai hu, right? That's the way you say it. Rohai hu, Paraguay. Thank you very much, Professor.